today on Rappler. Government Peace Panel Chair Marvik Leonin is the new Supreme Court Justice. The Ampatuans remain a power block in Maguindanao. 74 clan members are running in 14 municipalities. And HIV cases in the Philippines rise as number of cases fall for the rest of the world. Hello, we are coming to you live from the Radisson Blue Hotel in Cebu. This city is the base of about 80% of the shipping industry in the Philippines. In 2010, the province of Cebu recorded the most number of banks and the largest bank deposits. In 2011, Condé Nast ranked Cebu the 8th best island destination in Asia. And just last month, Entrepreneur Magazine called the furniture capital of the country the top 9 design capital of the world. I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. President Benigno Aquino appoints Government Peace Panel Chief Marvik Leonin to the Supreme Court Wednesday. He takes over the seat left vacant in August by now Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Presidential spokesman Edwin Lacerda says Aquino considers Leonin's appointment, quote, a contribution to his vision of an empowered and independent judiciary. Leonin will now be working with Justice Mariano del Castillo. In 2010, the Supreme Court admonished Leonin and 37 faculty members of the UP College of Law for asking del Castillo to resign. Following allegations, he plagiarized parts of his decision on a case involving comfort women. As government peace panel chief, Leonin oversaw the drafting of the Bangsamoro Framework Agreement. From 2008 to 2011, Leonin served as dean of the UP College of Law. Under his term, the college denounced the flip-flopping of the Supreme Court in various cases. It also castigated the court for allowing then-President Gloria Arroyo to name a chief justice despite the 2010 election appointment ban. When he was interviewed by the Judicial Bar and, Cou and Bar Council, Leonin says he will be independent of Malacanang. Leonin got seven of the total eight votes from the JBC. The patriarch and prominent clan members of the Ampatuan clan may be in jail, but the Ampatuans remain a power block in Maguindanao. The Ampatuans became notorious worldwide after the single deadliest event for journalists in history, the November 2009 massacre of 58 media men and family members of a rival clan. Proof that this political clan with a violent past is consolidating its power, 74 members in 14 municipalities are running for office in 2013. Of the 74 who filed their candidacy, 17 are incumbent. Two will run for higher office, while 15 will run for re-election. This increased from the 68 Ampatuans who ran in the 2010 polls. In fact, there are so many family members running in 2013, some of them will actually run against each other. The clan is not expanding into other towns, but fighting it out in the turf they now control. Their rival, Ismael Mangudadatu, the man the Ampatuans were trying to stop from running in 2010, is now the provincial governor, and even he is trying to build a dynasty. 17 members of his clan have filed their candidacy for 2013 from just one candidate in the last elections. Like the Ampatuans, the Mangudadatus are running in the same four municipalities they dominate. The Southeast Asian Press Alliance, or SHAPA, says the Philippines is the deadliest place in Southeast Asia for journalists. At least 100 cases related to impunity against the exercise of freedom of expression are recorded in Southeast Asia for 2012. The Philippines accounts for a full third or 36 of the 100 cases of impunity that SHAPA recorded in the first 10 months of 2012 alone. These 36 cases include 9 murders, 17 cases of threats, and 10 cases of attacks. All the cases recorded in the Philippines involve journalists and two activists, including one witness to a media murder case. The 2012 Global Report by the Joint United Nations Program on HIV AIDS shows new incidents of HIV infections drop by more than 50% in a decade. But findings show the opposite in the Philippines, with a 25% increase bucking the global trend. In 2012 in the Philippines, at least nine new cases of HIV or AIDS are reported every day compared to only one new case every three days in 2000. 
If the trend continues, the health department projects up to 37,000 new cases of HIV in 2015. The Ayala Group's Bank of the Philippine Islands confirms it is talking with the Lucio Tan Group to create what is potentially the country's largest financial institution. The two groups on Wednesday disclosed negotiations about BPI's possible acquisition of a majority stake in Philippine National Bank. BPI says it will make, quote, the appropriate disclosures according to PSE rules. In a separate announcement, PNB says a disclosure on the details of the transaction may be made after obtaining necessary approvals. The deal between two of the country's biggest conglomerates may result in a combined entity that will unseat Banco de Oro Unibank as the country's largest bank by assets. A ceasefire between Israel and Hamas militants remains elusive after seven days of war and a death toll of more than 100. Egypt is leading efforts to secure a truce between the two warring nations. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says, quote, Our hand is outstretched in peace to those of our neighbors who want to make peace with us, and the other hand is firmly grasping the sword of David. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemns Palestinian rocket attacks and urges Israel to show maximum restraint. The Philippines denies a claim by Israel that Filipinos in Gaza are being used as, quote, human shields by militant group Hamas. Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario says he doesn't think it's true. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, that indication has not been uh, conveyed to us by our people there. Del Rosario says the Philippines does not consider Hamas a terrorist organization. We, we actually are uh, dealing with them as a political group uh, and uh, we are trying to uh, establish uh, uh, contacts with them so that uh, we can properly protect our people there. Del Rosario reports on the situation of 120 Filipinos in Gaza. Four requested to leave and return to the Philippines and another eight want to stay in Egypt until the fighting stops. The Israeli embassy in Manila earlier said Filipinos and other foreigners residing in Gaza were being used as human shields against the Israeli military. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 7, top executives of media groups owned by mogul Rupert Murdoch are charged for allegedly bribing British officials for stories that appeared in the group's print publications. Murdoch protege Rebecca Brooks is charged with conspiracy over alleged illegal payments to a Ministry of Defense employee, while Andy Coulson, another former Murdoch employee, is charged with bribing officials for information about the royal family. The charges against Coulson, Brooks, and other suspects come from a Metropolitan Police investigation into alleged phone and computer hacking, which led to the closing of Murdoch's News of the World in 2011. At number 9, the verdict is out on rogue trader Kweku Adoboli, the man behind Swiss banking giant UBS's staggering $2.3 billion loss. Adoboli was found guilty of two counts of fraud in unauthorized trading and was sentenced to 11 years in prison. UBS says it is pleased the case is over and thanked authorities. It says none of its clients' funds were affected. The scandal led to the resignation of a UBS chief executive in September. And at number 10, public nudity is outlawed by lawmakers in liberal San Francisco City. The law bans anyone over five years old from exposing his or her, quote, genitals, perineum, or anal region on any public place. The fines start at $100 for a first offense, but rise to $500 and a year in jail for a third offense. There are exceptions, including the annual Pride Parade, the Bondage and Leather Folsom Street Fair, and the Beta Breakers Run, a historic costume optional race, as well as on San Francisco's beaches. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Rappler spent the day in Cebu with more than 500 students in our latest Move.ph chat series. Ayi Makaraig filed this vlog from the University of San Jose Recoletos. We're here at the University of San Jose Recoletos for Move Cebu. This afternoon, we've had workshops that followed several talks this morning on the theme Social Media for Social Change. We're talking to the students of the university and other participants of Move Cebu. So here we have Nicole. Nicole, hello. Good afternoon, Miss. 
So Nicole, um, tell us what are the things that you learned from this social media for social change move Cebu? What are the things you found to be interesting? Um, actually, Miss, I've learned a lot through this sem this seminar. First and foremost, I have a better understanding on what are the effects of the um, anti-cybercrime law, which is known as the Republic Act 10175, and it gave me an idea to fight for, me for freedom of expression. What shocked me most was their advocacy to help other people, especially by us using social media and spreading news and gathering information so every click and every uh, word that we utter or we post uh, it could change the whole, whole world and the you and all to, uh, total human behavior and of course uh, the flow of information that wraps up our interviews with participants of move cebu so from responsible retweeting and liking of posts to the use of social media for politics the participants say they've learned to use the internet and social networking sites for positive change, especially in addressing their issues as students here in Cebu. Ay Makaraig, Rappler, Cebu. Every story on Rappler has its own mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click on how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also shows you the top 10 stories that got the most votes on the mood meter. Let's take a look at some of today's stories. 74 members of the Ampatuan clan. Take a look at that. 89% angry, glowing red. And the top story of the day. On the other side, Marvik Leonin is the new Supreme Court Justice, 92% happy. That green contributing to the mood of the day crowdsourced, most people are happy. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, November 21, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today. Good night from Cebu.